Hello everyone and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Protection Warrior. This is going to be updated for 10.2 and this guide assumes you have played very little of the spec or have just reached max level with it and that is going to be the beginner basis of where we're starting on. And when I say beginner guide, I mean beginner to end game. While you are leveling, play whatever talents you want, experiment, have fun. It truly does not matter when you are leveling. Really, it doesn't. Just go have fun, test out some abilities, find out what they do. So when you do hit cap, you can have a better idea of the spec as a whole. In this guide, we're going to be covering active mitigation, defensives, offensive priority rotations, and all a bunch of pros and cons and utilities and what you bring to the table as prop warrior as long as some changes going in from 10.1 to 10.2 let's get right into it pros and cons of prop warrior prop warrior is incredibly strong at just not taking damage but that also means that you have to be a very proactive tank you need to keep up your active mitigations and before a big hit comes in you need to be hitting your defenses if you are allowing your active mitigations to drop or not hitting your defenses in time like if you take a chunk of health go from 100 percent to 60 percent and then you hit your defensive it's already too late you need to be very proactive it is also a very high apm action per minute spec because of how many things are on and off the gcd on the G the global cooldown is things like thunderclap you hit thunderclap and everything goes on i accidentally hit the normal training dummy there let me get the combat there before he starts hitting me from behind versus uh shield block and ignore pain being off the gcd which is very very important to know because you can hit those two buttons simultaneously you can hit a thunderclap and an ignore pain if you have the rage right very very important to know but those are kind of the pros and cons. You're not that great at healing yourself back up. You have impending victory, which is really your only heal, as well as last stand. But you're going to know last stand is kind of eh, because you're going to be using it more offensively, defensively with kind of what we're going to talk about. Bleeds and magic damage are really your big, or sustained magic damage are your two big weaknesses. If the magic damage is above 20 seconds, you do have Spell Reflect, and we're going to talk about that in the defensive situation. So, active mitigation. What is your first and foremost goal that you should be trying to achieve as a protection warrior? And that is shield block uptime. Shield block is one of the most broken active mitigations in the game. Plain and simple. You are aiming for 100% uptime on shield block. If you are in combat, shield block is up. And you do have different, different ways of attaining this, right? Obviously, you can hit shield block. It has a 12 second cooldown. And with our talent choices, it gives you 8 seconds of shield block. So obviously, you can't achieve full uptime by just hitting the button alone. You do have shield charge with the champion's bulwark talent which these two combined are a pretty big staple. Uh, this will also give you shield charge whenever, a uh, shield charge, shield block whenever you hit shield charge. Shield charge being a 45 second cooldown, stuns the target, does a bunch of damage, very, very good button to be hitting and stunning things consistently and constantly. The other thing that you do have is bolster when combined with last stand. So what bolster does is when you do use last stand on a two minute cooldown, which this reduces it down from three minutes, it grants you shield block for the entire effect of its duration. And that is 15 seconds. So very, very important for you to be hitting last stand when you need shield block. Don't use it towards the end of a pull. Try and kind of kite your way out of it. So then that way you could start the pull if you need it and have a decent uptime on your defensives. Your next active mitigation is ignore pain. This has a one second cooldown. You can pretty much spam this. It costs 35 rage and you will ignore 50% of all incoming damage. And this stacks twice. The number is going to vary based on the level item level of your gear. But this is going to be the primary... like. Shield block will not show up on the healing meters. On the healing meters, ignore pain will show up. And this is going to be the biggest chunk of your healing. So when you're talking about rage burning, you're, you, 
typically doing it through shield block, ignore pain, and then lastly through revenge, because those are your th biggest things that uh, cost rage. Rage generators are things like shield slam, thunderclap, and other abilities like shockwave will also generate rage, shield charge, charge can generate rage as well. But rotationally speaking, the two buttons that you're going to be pressing the most to generate the most amount of rage are thunderclap and shield slam. Defensives. Prot Warrior has two main, three main defensives, sorry, three main defensives. Demoralizing Shout, Shield Wall, and Spell Reflect. Now, Demoralizing Shout, when you pair it with Booming Voice, also generates 30 Rage when you hit it on a 45 second cooldown, and will increase the damage you deal to the targets by 20%. So this is a button where you, you as the player have to make the conscious decision of whether or not you want to be using this offensively or defensively. And this is some of the player agency that I just really enjoy seeing and having as a prot warrior. Now, most of the time I'm going to be using it offensively and relying on shield wall, which I do not have on my bars here because whenever I was pressing it, it was literally kicking me out of the game. Let's see if it still does that. Nope, it does not do that. That is great. Yay. <laughs> Shield Wall reduces all damage you take by 40% for 8 seconds. Incredibly powerful, and there are the, a lot of means to reduce that. So when we get to the offensive priority rotation and things like that, we will be discussing that a little bit further. And Spell Reflect. Now, Spell Reflect is one of the most broken abilities in the game. If you check my UI Patreon doc down below, it is free. There is going to be a week or there for Season 3 Dragonflight Essentials uh, Spell Reflects. This is something you are going to want to be using constantly. It has a low 20 second cooldown. You raise your shield and you reflect the first spell cast on you and you reduce the magic damage you take by 25% for five seconds. The way this used to work is when you reflected or deflected something, because both can happen, it would actually eliminate the buff. Now, every 20 seconds, you can have a 25% magic debuff uh, magic DR, sorry, damage reduction for five seconds. This is incredibly strong. And another way that we can also deal with magic damage is through the spell block talent. On a minute and a half cooldown, you are able to block spells for 30 seconds. This is incredibly situational based on the dungeon. There are some dungeons where I don't want this at all, and then there are some dungeons where I can't live without this. And I absolutely love having it. If we're going to go back to Season 1 Dragonflight and talk about Temple of the Jade Serpent. If you guys remember the mobs after the uh, right before the last boss, Spellblock is quite literally the only thing that was truly keeping me alive as a prot warrior whenever I was doing those keys, especially on high fortify. So this is uh, an absolutely amazing button, and as a flex point, you're going to want to be looking into taking this where you feel there's high damage scenarios that are coming in. Because being able to block spells for 30 seconds is incredibly powerful. And cycling through your defensives of shield wall, spell reflect, spell block, and things like that is a pretty key priority to you staying alive as a prot warrior. Because like I said earlier, if you are not hitting your defensives before the damage is incoming, you're not being proactive enough. When you see that big hit coming, when you know that big hit is coming, it should be a spell reflect. It should be a shield wall. And Shield Wall can get below one minute because I tend to run in Impenetrable Wall. Shield Slam generates more range and it reduces the cooldown of Shield Wall by five seconds for every Shield Slam. And, and when we're going to get talk about the offensive priorities, we're going to talk about why this is so powerful. But you also have Anger Management, so Burning Rage, every 10 Rage you spend, reduces the cooldown of Avatar and Shield Wall by one second. And I did not talk about Thunderlord, but Thunderlord is one of my... It's, I love this talent so much. And this is where it can make Demo Shout an offensive and a defensive. And it kind of makes everything work together. So it increases the radius of Demo Shout by 5 yards. Great. But each enemy hit by Thunderclap reduces the remaining cooldown of Demo Shout by 1.5 seconds up to 4.5 seconds. So you're gaining the max of this as long as there are three targets to be hitting Thunderclap with. And this will reduce Demo Shout to a really low cooldown, allowing you to play with it offensively a lot more and kind of cycle through your defenses and have an easier time doing that. So with Shield Wall, we know that Burning Rage reduces the cooldown of Shield Wall and hitting Shield Slam reduces the cooldown of it as well, as, long as, uh, as well as some other things. 
when we're talking about offensive abilities and things like that, we talked about be, you know building rage. You're going to do that through thunderclap and shield slam. Shield slam is by far the most amount of damage in a key run for me. Single target AOE, all of that fun stuff. This ability absolutely slaps. So this is one that you're going to want to be, uh, it's going to generate 18 rage minimum whenever you do use it. So this is going to be your primary source of rage generation and Thunderclap also generates five rage. Uh, you always want to be charging into battle. That's kind of the little things that we can talk about later. We do have Avatar that generates 10 rage as well. And a lot of little things like that. <laughs> I'm talking and I'm talking a lot. When you are in combat, Shield Slam is very, very important for you to be tracking Violent Outbursts if you want to maximize your Rage output. So what Violent Outbursts is, is Consuming 30 Rage grants a stack of Seeing Red, which happens very constantly, and at 8 stacks of Seeing Red, it turns into Violent Outbursts, causing your next Thunderclap to deal 200% increased damage, or Shield Slam or Thunderclap, to deal more damage, 200% more damage, and generate 100% more rage and grant ignore pain. Now, if you're looking at a, a point of rage generation alone, doubling 18 is obviously way more than doubling thunderclap. So when you get a violent outburst, you're going to want to be shield slamming this to just get so much more rage uh, and kind of work it there. Now, I wouldn't not hit thunderclap for a long period of time but if i know if i'm waiting for a global or if i know a shield slam is proc is like coming i'm feeling it or it's almost on cooldown i might wait the one but that is at most try and prior if you have both up prioritize shield slam over thunderclap thunderclap is a great aoe threat generator as well by the way and it applies rend through the blood and thunder talent you do not need rend on your bars as a protection warrior not needed at all just hit hit thunderclap rend gets spread to five targets and especially because in 10.2 we are a bleed centric warrior with our new tier set which is going to be covered in the 10.2 video i already have a preliminary 10.2 video but i am going to be putting out a 10.2 guide for this so do keep that in mind. And offensive, you have a couple of main abilities that do quite a bit of damage or allow you to do quite a bit more damage. Ravager being number one. So this is a ground placed ability. You can do a macro if you want to just put it at your feet. This does follow the targets, which is really, really nice. This deals good damage, but where the value of Ravager comes in Mythic Plus is it generates 10 rage each time it deals damage. More targets more rage this allows you to be an offensive and a defensive juggernaut at the same time and allow you to get just burn through rage like crazy in a lot of action per actions per minute you know you're able to hit revenge and shield block and revenge and and and, and ignore pain all at the same time and just burn through that rage while also just doing more damage your next one is thunderous roar, uh, roar. thunderous roar is just a all around you it deals bleeds. I am think I'm getting buffed by an Ogvoker right now, so I'm seeing the numbers go up and down through physical damage and things like that. But our, with our tier sets being very bleed-centric, Thunderous Roar is going to do a bulk of your damage in Mythic+. Plus. So this is one that you're going to want to be pairing uh, with your extra offensives, which is Avatar. Avatar, tra Avatar. <laughs> Avatar transforms you into a Colossus for 20 seconds, causing you to deal 20% increased damage and removes all roots and snares. Now there are some times where you do want to hold Avatar for a couple of seconds to reduce, to remove some of these roots and snares. If we're thinking the deep chill magic dot in Halls of Infusion, if there's anything like that in 10.2, this is usually worth holding on to for a couple of seconds. I wouldn't hold on to this for 20 or 30 seconds unless you know you're going to die without that uh, root or snare removal. But if you can hold it th for three or four seconds, it's really not that bad, especially because if you don't have to use a defensive to get through a magic dot and you can just use an offensive, a little bit better, right? But that 20% increased damage is really, really good on a base cooldown of 1.5 minutes. This is easily reduced to about 45 seconds, 50 seconds, when you are burning through rage like crazy. Now, if you haven't heard me say it already, I'm saying it again. Burn rage. That is the entire goal of Protection Warrior burn rage you get so many offensive and defensive benefit out of it 
that the more aggressive you play with your Rage Burn, as long as you are upkeeping Shield Block and Ignore Pain, and you are able to Revenge, and you are just burning Rage through using all three of those while maintaining your uh, Thunderclaps and your Shield Slams, you're going to just be an absolute monster on the field. And you do have quite a bit of movement utility as well to kind of help you get through things. Through Intervene, if you need to get out of somewhere very, very quick, you can Intervene your way out. Use one of your ranged DPS as kind of a focus. You know, like, hey, you know, this ranged hunter that likes to, you know, stand out in Narnia. Intervene, I'm out of the bad swirlies. You can charge right back into battle with charge, which is baseline, and gives you two, uh, with double time, it gives you two zacks of charge. You can also use uh, shield charge as well. The nice thing with shield charge, well, it has a 25 yard range. It has no minimum range, and charge does have a minimum range. You have to be so far away to be able to get value out of it unfortunately in 10.2 our rallying cry is getting gutted and this is mainly a raid nerf which feels which is understandable but rallying cry was already a middling utility spell at best in mythic plus and it getting gutted is really really bad so i think i'm actually going to be opting out of rallying cry for a little while and kind of test out some other builds as we kind of go along uh i really i've always liked concussive blows especially while in pug groups and i've always liked hone reflexes due to the cooldown of shield slam which is nice but you're getting a lot of shield slam procs and it also reduces the cooldown of pummel interrupt everything you can interrupts are your forte when you are running honed reflexes and concussive blows we just covered a lot and that's perfectly fine some other utility that you do have though is you have a taunt all with challenging shout and that can turn into an interrupt at 1.5 minute cooldown from two minutes with disrupting shout this is an excellent flex point for you to be going into especially in dungeons that have just an absolute boatload of interrupts this isn't for me this isn't a default in every single dungeon most of the time, your Shockwave can take care of more than enough things, but there are some dungeons where Disrupting Shout just feels so much better to take than anything else. Burn Rage, keep Shield Block up 100%, keep your two stacks of Ignore Pain, and do damage. Combining Avatar with Demoralizing Shout to give you a 40% damage bump is going to allow you to get a lot of threat on pull and not and feel a lot safer because if you have shield block up you can easily get a stack of ignore pain through just hitting demoralizing shout everything's uh, everything's applied around you so you start with shield block a couple stacks of ignore pain 20 percent man uh 20 reduction to everything around you protection warrior is very safe to go into battle it's when things get system when when the damage incoming damage is sustained that's its problem Last thing we got to talk about uh, Protection Warrior is Shield Slam procs. 10.2 is going to be another patch where we are looking to just get as many Shield Slam procs as possible and fish for them. And you do this through Devastator. So this uh, removes Devastate as a talent, makes it into a passive, and your auto attacks have a chance to reset the, the cooldown of Shield Slam fully. You do also have Strategist, which Devastate... Thunderclap, Revenge, and Execute all have a 30% chance to, to uh, reset the remaining cooldown on Shield Slam. So the more buttons you're pressing, the better. And the faster that you are attacking, the better as well. So Battering Ram here on Shield Charge, I really like this combination of talents right at the bottom here. Uh, Battering Ram will increase your auto attack speed by 20%. And that's where the meat is here, where you are able to just consistently and constantly pretty much never have to wait for the entire cooldown of shield slam to go down before you just absolutely get a, a, a new proc and then you are able to keep going and this is going to synergize very very well with the tier set that we'll talk about in 10.2 be very proactive with your defensives use them i know when you look at shield wall and it has 3.5 four minute cooldown it seems like it's one of that thing you want to save burn enough rage it will go down to like 50 55 seconds less than a minute pretty much all the time when you are in combat and burning rage do not feel bad for pressing this button and pressing it often one of the big mistakes i see protection warriors make is almost never hitting shield wall because they think it's they're only going to get 
four or five uses out of the dungeon when in reality you can get 15 to 20 in a 20 minute run right if you kind of play aggressively enough you can get a lot of uses out of this button but you have to play aggressively and know when to use it so there you go those are that's the beginner's guide now oh let's talk about stances real quick real real quick so you have two stances you have battle stance and you have defensive stance uh anybody in the highest end is going to tell you to sit in defensive stance because all you do is lose five percent damage to gain a 20 percent damage reduction and if you feel squishy stay in defensive stance but that really only applies to like the bleeding edge of keys or if you're highly under geared if you feel comfortable you can just sit in battle stance and use defensive stance there is a macro in that ui thing that uh the ui patreon doc down below that will allow you to just simply swap with one button on a three second cooldown menu so you can swap and have an extra 20 percent damage gr on demand you, you, you utilize all of your defensives and you think something's coming you can just swap to defensive stance and be fine i personally last season i didn't start sitting in defensive stance until certain keys at 24 level in fortified that was the level i was so if you're doing a 15 a 16 a 17 you can just stay in battle stance and in fact this will teach you how to play protection warrior a little bit better by not taking damage by using your active mitigations and having an extra defensive it's just going to make you a better player until you can get to that level of key if that's what you're trying to attain thank you very much for watching the beginner's guide to protection warrior i know it's a lot i'm sorry this spec is my absolute baby i love it to death it's so fun I will be posting uh, my build in this as well, and I'm going to be trying to update it as we can. Uh, but it's probably going to be based around the 10.2 tier set and whether or not you have it. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Have yourself a good one. Happy tanking. Bye.